So in this clip we will discuss some uh, accounting, specifically accounting of the real side uh, in a macroeconomy. And uh, we'll begin with the simplest possible case, which is that we have a closed economy without a government. Closed economy meaning that we have uh, no exports and no imports and uh, no government meaning that, well, there are no government expenditures and uh, no taxes are being raised. Uh, that uh, means that we can write the income identity as y equal to c plus s. So whatever private income there is, y on the left hand side has to be equal to the sum of consumption and savings. So that is uh, the income identity. And then we have uh, an expenditure identity that has to match that, which is that y is equal to uh, C plus I, where C is again consumption and I is investment. Now if you put these two together, uh, it's quite straightforward to see that uh, when income is equal to expenditure, uh, investment is equal to savings, uh, which in turn means that uh, in the language of the principles textbook that demand is equal to supply. So uh, where investment is equal to savings, the economy is uh, in um, macroeconomic balance. Um, that does not mean that uh, we're talking about uh, what might explain uh, how this uh, equality comes about here with the arrows trying to denote uh, uh, the direction of causality. So uh, we're not really talking about the theory um, or motivations and behavior of the many agents that form this macroeconomy, but we're simply laying the accounting framework that uh, is helpful in describing what's going on. So once we get to the theory and the models and the behavior, we will have to explain how this uh, identity uh, will be satisfied but for now we're just trying to lay out the accounting framework so that's an important distinction so uh, that said uh, let's go to the next case which is uh, the more interesting case where we'd have uh, an open economy uh, and the government well in that case how does the income uh, income identity look uh, so we'll go down here to the next income identity which is that y is equal to still C plus S, but now as well taxes. So total income uh, has to be, uh, is ex uh, total income is decomposed into consumption, savings, and taxes. Second, uh, we have uh, the expenditure identity, which is that uh, total product uh, is decomposed uh, into uh, the sources of demand, which in an open economy uh, with a government is C plus I as before plus G plus exports minus imports. So X minus M is uh, what we call uh, the trade balance and if we're abstracting from unilateral transfers and, and net income receipts from the rest of the world that is uh, the current account so uh, the real side of uh, the international accounting. Now what, is, what do these two together mean? The income and expenditure identity in the open economy context. Well, uh, we can take them together, or actually, uh, let's, let's take them separately, namely write this first one here, the income identity, as y minus c minus t equal to s so that principally the remainder of income after uh, consumption and tax expenditures has to be identically equal to savings again that does not mean that we're talking about causality but that is just the accounting identity and here on the bottom well if we subtract c and t as well here on the left and right hand side what do you get here on the right hand side? Well, we get I plus G minus T plus X minus M. And it's straightforward to see here that D 
these two right hand sides have to be equal so that we can uh, write s equal to i plus g minus t plus x fix that plus x minus n now that's an important condition what does that mean so first um, this savings on the left hand side are private savings so that is what is saved by uh, business and households in the domestic economy now uh, what is this term the difference between government expenditures and uh, total taxes uh, suppose that it's positive well that means that the government expends more than uh, it has in income which is the government's tax revenue so if g minus t is positive the government is this saving so we might rewrite g minus t we could rewrite g minus t as the negative of government savings if g minus t this left hand side is positive then government saving is uh, uh, government this saving is on the rise so the government is increasing its debt so that's one and I will increase uh, include that here in this fashion now what about X minus M X minus M is uh, the difference between exports and imports and in that sense uh, denotes the difference between uh, the expenditures and income of the foreign sector vis-a-vis -vis our economy if X minus M is positive the rest of the world has higher expenditures in our economy than its income from our economy which again in analogy can be called the negative foreign savings so with these two let me summarize that as s equal to i minus sg minus sf or alternatively of course I'll bring all the savings to the right hand side so I get s plus sg plus sf is equal to i and that's an important uh, relationship which mirrors in fact as you can see here uh, which mirrors exactly the balance condition for the closed economy without a government so you have that uh, total savings on the left hand side uh, from private public and foreign sources has to add up to finance investment okay um, let me clean that up just a little bit here and then I'm going to scroll down a bit here because I want to just add one thought to to this argument and I want to begin with this with this condition here that is that uh, I can rewrite this condition uh, by bringing the private savings as well to the right hand side and then I get I minus S plus G minus T plus X minus M equal to zero I'll put this in parentheses here just to emphasize it and we see that these three items these three differences have to add up to zero now what are these three differences we've already argued that g minus t is the negative of government savings and x minus m is the negative of foreign savings well uh, what is i minus s then it is essentially what we call the private balance so we have here that's not pretty that's better the private balance G minus T is the public balance and X minus M the foreign balance so the sum of the private public and foreign balance has to be zero 
um, and that means you can go through a, a th uh, we can go through a quick thought experiment here that means for example if uh, x minus m is decreasing and is negative well that means that um, both both or at least one of uh, the private and public balance have to be increasing and positive so you see that if we are in uh, a foreign deficit so that we're um, we're expending more on our imports than we are earning from our exports um, well then either the private sector or the public sector would have to run a deficit so that government dissaving would be higher or private dissaving would be higher and in similar fashion, you can go through um, you can go through uh, such thought experiments, which essentially give you the same kind of information that you'd get from uh, from this fundamental macro macroeconomic balance condition. Uh, so there's one uh, additional way to look at this. Uh, let me just get rid of these highlights so not to confuse anybody uh, and that is that you um, uh, know for the private public and foreign balance uh, each of the three differences the first item represents an injection a demand injection I G and X and S T and M presents a leakage so that uh, when we say the private public and foreign balance have to sum to zero uh, we could uh, equivalently say that uh, the um, total injections have to equal total leakages and that again would be just uh, a restatement of the macroeconomic, macroeconomic balance condition that investment is equal to savings even if it is decomposed into uh, private, public and foreign savings. Let's stop right here.